Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at the splendid Ruby 63 Top Boost Amplifier pedal from our tone chasing friends over at Universal Audio. As I'm sure you're well aware, Universal Audio is globally renowned for faithfully reproducing classic analog sounds via the digital domain, from iconic studio hardware to their world-class UAD modeling. For their Ruby 63 pedal, they laser focused their attention on accurately emulating the legendary sounds of the Vox AC30, the 30 watt two x 12 combo that quite literally fueled the British invasion of the 60s, both on stage and in the studio. <laughs> After five years of intense work, UA's efforts paid off, and now those instantly recognizable chimey cleans and sizzling crunch tones of this famous British compo lurk within this sturdy stomp box. And believe you me, that's no mean feat. After all, those hallowed tones from across the pond have been heard on countless classic recordings and are instantly recognizable. From the Beatles and the aforementioned British Invasion to U2, Tom Petty, and Radiohead. Plus, of course, there are those legendary AC30 tones created by the one and only Brian May of Queen. And oh yeah, let's not forget, please, the often overlooked six-string brilliance of the late great Irish guitarist Rory Gallagher, who was an avid AC30 user. If you're not familiar with Rory, I'd highly recommend writing that wrong immediately. After all, one of his many fans was a guy named Jimi Hendrix. Yes, my friend, Mr. Gallagher was that good. <laughs> The Ruby 63 is part of Universal Audio's UAFX pedal series that started with the critically acclaimed Golden Reverberator, Starlight Echo Station, then the Astra Modulation Machine. The Ruby boasts dual engine processing, which offers up an incredible amount of processing power that's been dedicated to one task and one task only, meticulous emulation of the AC30. That's it, my friend, period. Now, in order to create the tones that live within the Ruby 63 pedal, Universal Audio tracked down two golden sample amps. What were these golden sample AC30 amps, do I hear you ask? Well, I'm gonna let my old tone chasing friend, James Santiago of UA answer that one. Take it away, Squire. So with, with Ruby, we actually have two separate amplifiers. So we're, we call one, it's called Ruby, but if you look at the switching, one's called Brilliant and there's Normal Vibrato. So there's a top boost from later 63 or later 64, and then a non-top boost that was around 60. And they both have really interesting stories that I've had this non-top boost 60 for years waiting for the moment we could actually model this thing. And I had found that in LA here because another friend of mine said, uh, you know, I'm not really an AC30 guy. And he had just sold it like a couple of days before. Very famous blues rock guitar player who likes Fenders and Les Pauls. And you can put that together pretty quickly. I said, where's it at? And I found it. I'm like, this thing sounds great. And so I, we, I had that one sitting there. And then we found another um, top boost one actually in Europe. You know, we live in California. That's where the company's at and where I'm at. So there's a lot of fenders. Everything was made here. But to get a great Vox amp, they're all based in Europe. So we had to go through this process of going to all these European dealers and getting AC3, looking at them, going through the circuits. And we found one that had actually come over from Italy. And the amount of packing and the expense to get this thing here was insanity. But we, we got one here that was just great. Um, and it's I've really become a fan of that that Class A top boost circuit because it's, it's a clean sound you can't do with a Fender or a really any other type of amp. Just historically, the, that sound has such a unique jangle and air to it that it was really fun to get to to work on that unique sound that's become part of so many like clean sounds these days that that airy sort of uh really big sound that it's somehow big and small at the same time it carves its own little space i don't it's hard to explain it but 
you know, so th this was a, a fun project and I've really become a fan of that circuit the last few years. Thanks, James. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for being such an avid tone chaser, my friend. Oh, before I go any further, I should quickly point out this. I'm playing the Ruby 63 via a UA interface straight into Pro Tools in stereo with nothing extra added whatsoever. No EQ, no effects, no compression, no talent, no nothing. As you may well expect if you're an AC30 fanatic, the Ruby boasts three channels, namely Brilliant, Normal, and Vibrato. These are selectable via a mini toggle switch, this one right here. The pedal also had three speaker options, also selectable via a mini toggle switch, this one here on the left. These three speaker options are, number one, Silver, which emulates a rare 15 watt Celestian Silver Bulldog. <laughs> The middle one is labeled blue, and as you'd expect, it's a model of the original AC30 speaker that tried, the tested, the legendary Blue Bulldog. And then last, but certainly not least, at the bottom, green, which is a modern Celestian G12H. As you could hear, and I could certainly feel as well, each speaker type has its own unique voice. And this is a pretty cool feature to have at your fingertips, especially when it comes to recording, as it gives you instant access to new tonal twists and turns. Tonal subtleties, if you will. Also, when you register your Ruby 63, they reward you with three bonus cabinets. Nice. And these are selected when the speaker LED goes to green. Oh yeah, and when the speaker switch's LED is off, that means you've disengaged it and also the unit's dynamic room modeling too. This is ideal if you're running your Ruby into the front of your amp, obviously. Oh yeah, and there's a mobile app too. And it connects to the Ruby via Bluetooth and gives you access to a bunch of cool factory and customized artist presets. Also different switching options and more, including saving, naming, and recalling your own presets. Nice. <laughs> The six control knobs on the Ruby 63 are exactly as you'd expect them to be. Going from left to right on the top row, we have the following. First and foremost, the input volume. Next to it, the cut control. And then last but by no means least on that top row, the self-explanatory output volume control. Incidentally, just so you're aware, the cut control works by reducing the high frequencies as you rotate it clockwise. So if you want more treble, you turn it the other way, which might be counterintuitive initially. So remember, more treble, turn it counterclockwise or anticlockwise. Got it? Good. The bottom row of three controls each have two functions, depending on where the middle mini toggle switch is set, namely this switch right here. When it's set in the middle setting, namely this one here, which is labeled amp, the bottom row of controls control bass, treble, and boost. And once again, if you know Vox, you already know this. The first two, treble and bass, only work when the brilliant channel is selected. And they both reduce their respective frequencies when turned clockwise. Which may seem counterintuitive at first if you're not familiar with the Vox way. As for the last control in that trio, the boost control, Let's hear the backstory on that one about it from another of UA's tone chasing demons, Tor Morganson. Over to you, my friend. I think actually the idea of adding the, uh, the boost pedals to, to all three of these amps really came from Ruby because they're just a couple of legendary guitar sounds that you really can't achieve unless you put certain boosts in front of it. And, you know, obviously the most legendary one being, you know, the normal channel of a, you know, a non-top boost uh, AC30 with a, with a treble boost in front of it. And that's, you know, obviously the Brian May sound and it's also the Rory Gallagher sound. So you could almost say like, depending on what guitar you play, you get, you know, certain flavors and certain tones, but it's that combination that's really unique. And, you know, as, as a company, we've always been about, you know, providing amazing, you know, recorded, uh, recorded sounds, whether it's guitar, or whatever it is, 
uh, right out of the box. And it became pretty apparent that, you know, we needed those boosts in the pedal if you wanted to achieve those sounds. Uh, so that's really where that, that whole idea came from. And obviously we sort of applied that to all three pedals. Good stuff. Thanks, Tor. Now we know the backstory, here's what the Ruby's boost kicks in, and there's a different front-end boost emulation for each of the three channels. The boost on the Brilliant channel is the preamp of an Echoplex EP3 tape delay. <laughs> Nice drive with jangle, perfect. The boost on the normal channel is, as I'm sure you'd hope and expect, a Range Master treble booster as used by the likes of Brian May and the aforementioned late great Rory Gallagher. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, the boost option on the vibrato channel is a transparent, clean boost. Let's check it out. Now, when this middle toggle switch is set to Alt, namely like this, the bottom three knobs become controls for the following, left to right, room, and then speed and intensity for the vibrato. And the latter two obviously only work when the vibrato channel is engaged. Duh! Let's check them out, shall we? First, let's do the vibrato stuff. I've got to say, this pedal is really, really intuitive. It must be when an idiot like me can dial in something half decent pretty quickly without having a brain aneurysm. This is what I've just dialed in. Here we go. <laughs> was jolly nice, wasn't it? Now, as for the room control, it adds dynamic, studio ambience, and air. Let's quickly check it out, shall we? First, let's hear it with the control at seven o'clock. <laughs> Now let's try it at 12 o'clock. And then at 3 o'clock. As you can hopefully hear, even with my dodgy playing, we go from a close mic sound in an ISO booth to room mics in a much larger room, and all points in between with the mere turn of a knob. I like it. And that, my friend, just leaves one function of the middle mini toggle switch to explain, the self-explanatory store. Yep, when I dial in something I really like on the unit, I can save it as a preset by holding the switch down to store, just like this. You saw that green light flash. That means I've stored that until I write over it. Hurrah! This means I can recall what I've just saved whenever I hit the preset button. Now, when the left foot switch is red, like this, that tells you I'm gonna hear whatever the pedal controls are set to at that moment in time. Then when I hit the preset button again, hey presto, that light goes green, and what I've just saved is instantly called up again. So I've effectively got a two channel pedal amp right there. So this means I can go from a live setting effectively to my preset, just like this. Very nice, but wait, there's more. As already mentioned, thanks to the mobile UAFX app, I can hook up my Ruby via Bluetooth and access a bunch of cool factory and unique artist presets. Then I can tweak them, save them, rename them, and recall them as mine. I like it. 
And as already mentioned, I can also alter what the foot switches do on the unit. For example, I can set the left one to switch the boost on and off, while the right one toggles between the live and preset modes. Also, the app has a clever four cable mode that reconfigures the Ruby's pair of stereo inputs and outputs, allowing you to run the Ruby in the series effects loop of your amp, adding another couple of channels to however many your amp already has. So, thanks to my Ruby 63, my Marshall DSL 100 now has four channels. Nice. My pal Don demonstrates this fine option on his UA Woodrow video, by the way. The Woodrow being the Ruby 63's Fender Tweed flavored sibling. Check it out. It's a darned impressive pedal. <laughs> And then last but certainly not least, the Ruby's USB connection allows firmware updates via the UAFX Control desktop app. And there you have it, my friend, the UA Ruby 63 pedal, the British Invasion and Brian May in a box, if you will. My first real amp many, many moons ago, by the way, was an old AC30, and I'm blown away just by how good this pedal sounds and feels. To my ears and fingers, it reacts and behaves just like an AC30 does and also plays nicely with other pedals, be they in front or behind it. What a concept. Nice one, chaps. If you've got any questions about this or any other UA product, please go to sweetwater.com or better still, call your sales engineer. That said, I'm out. Toodle pip. <laughs>